Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and happy Hanukkah. Thank you, Rabbi Birkin, for your inspirational words and songs, and thank you to all our community clergy for your leadership and guidance throughout the year. I want to thank my friends Richard and Colleen Fain for chairing this spectacular event. Your attention to every detail and your commitment to ensuring the success of this event are deeply appreciated. This past April, the Fanes and my wife Marsha and me, along with more than 700 of our soon-to-be closest friends, traveled to Israel on the Miami Mega Mission. So many of you were there with us, and it was an extraordinary journey. Among the many activities we shared during those nine days, one that remains foremost in my mind is our community gathering atop Masada. With 17 members of our community's clergy leading us in prayer, we stood together among those ancient ruins, filled with enormous pride and gratitude to be part of this wonderful Jewish community. As the sun set over Masada and we sang O Se Shalom, white doves flew over us, their wings emblematic of our dreams for a just and lasting peace in Israel. Unfortunately, last month, those hopes for peace were once again shaken as a sharp rise in unprovoked rocket attacks by Hamas militants from Gaza terrorized our family in Israel. But as always, Federation and Miami's Jewish community were there with and for the people of Israel. Immediately, we did our part to provide assistance and support to those in harm's way and affected by the miserable situation. Last week, Jewish leaders across the U.S. traveled to Israel as part of a solidarity mission organized by the Jewish Federations of North America. Bob Barron and I were privileged to be part of this special mission, which included five others from Miami. In a few minutes, Bob will share with you what he saw, what we saw during our trip and his reaction. But I would like to take a minute and tell you mine. I've been to Israel many times, but this was the first time my usually strong, stoic, everything's okay, brothers and sisters admitted to fear, real and unadulterated fear, the fear that comes from knowing that the ceasefire is only temporary, the fear that comes from putting your children and the elderly in shelters quickly to save lives, and the fear that comes from knowing that this, this may never end in our lifetimes. One high school student named Yael, who lives in a moshav right out Stero, outside of Starot, said she had a breakdown because she was so scared. And she said she was not alone. Her parents had to take her to the north until the rockets stopped. When we first met her principal, an extraordinarily articulate gentleman, he said, we're fine, everything is beseder. When he took us around and he heard Yael, he too admitted that he and his family were suffering terribly. And he said that many of the children and adults had gone into therapy to deal with the stress. On this night, as we celebrate the miracle of Hanukkah, we should also pray for another miracle, the physical and emotional safety of our people in Israel and wherever they are. I also ask as a favor of you, as you listen to Bob speak, consider our role in the partnership between diaspora Jews and our people who have chosen to live and make Israel their home and secure our future as proud and strong Jews. I think this a lot about this a lot for my children and grandchildren, and for your children and grandchildren. I submit that we have the much easier end of the relationship. We just write checks. 
our children play freely, and some wear yarmulkes. No, it is, no one is trying to hurt them because they are Jewish. We should never, ever take that for granted. A little less than two months from now, on February 7, and in this very room, our, our Federation will host the main event. We expect an attendance of 1,400 people, making it our largest community-wide event in a very long time. And this is the year to do it, as we celebrate Israel's 65th birthday and the 75th anniversary of our own Federation. We're delighted that Moj and Robert Daniel have agreed to chair this momentous event, which will include entertainment by Israeli superstar Einat Zarouf, who performed at Masada during the Mega Mission, and the always inspiring Dr. Daniel Gordis. Hey, he's one of the best. Here is the most important thing to note. To encourage the largest possible attendance, to involve new people, and to make this a true community celebration, we're opening the doors wide. While everyone will have the opportunity to make a gift to the 2013 Federation UJA campaign in a meaningful way, we have not placed a minimum gift requirement for attendance. This is the first time we have decided to do this and for this main event, and Israel's 65th birthday provide the perfect reason. We know you will want to join us and invite all of your friends and family to be with us also that night to showcase our Federation to those who may have never attended before. I promise you a magical evening. Please spread the word. One more last piece of important news. The foundation of the Greater Miami Jewish Federation is launching Create a Jewish Legacy, or CJL, an endowment program that will empower every member of the community to have a long-term impact on Jewish institutions and organizations at home and Israel and around the world. Through CJL, a donor can establish one legacy gift to benefit one or more organizations. This program has enjoyed great success in other communities and is being chaired by, in Miami by Barbara Black Goldfarb and a talented and dedicated steering committee. Success is ensured. CGAL represents a shared commitment by local agencies, synagogues, and day schools to work together to collectively secure endowment gifts. We've already signed on 12 partner organizations for our pilot year, and I know you will be hearing more about CJL in the coming weeks. I know this will have a significant and lasting impact on our community and further secure our strong Jewish future. <laughs>